my granddad doesn't know you're married no my granddad is 93 bless him he's my last remaining grandparent he's he's really he really has um, what does he have Rose? he's got dementia right so he he's doesn't got skin cancer and hasn't got he's Alzheimer's. slowly breaking down it would probably cause him more upset well it's not just that it's just some days he's not gonna remember some days he doesn't know who rose is and some days he does so there's no point me going there and meeting her granddad and saying oh hi i'm her wife because he might know that day and then another day, he wouldn't know who I was. He wouldn't know who Rose is. He wouldn't know. The only thing my granddad cares about, right, this is so superficial, but my granddad comes from a generation where if you don't have money, your life, well, like, obviously now, if you don't have money, your life sucks. So all he ever cared about was working hard, working hard. He's from a very, very poor, he's actually an Irish gypsy. Um, he's from a very poor background. So he worked really, really hard and he got enough money to have three kids, and whatever. So every time I see him, I say, granddad, you'll never guess. He's like, what? I and mean, this is not true. I say, I am so well off. Ooh, I have, oh, sorry, I have more money than you could even imagine. He's like, oh, that is great news. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's not true, by the way. We don't have true. more money than you can ever imagine because I would have bought a house and got some sperm in my vagina to have a baby right now. That's what I would be doing if we had. <laughs> Tell us some examples of superstitions you believe. I don't, um, I have. I don't want to talk about mind. this because I'm going to start like. Yeah, OCD. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it, guys, because I have to do stupid things. And yeah, yeah, boring yeah. For you, to you touch your witness. head. Um, you used to do things with doorknobs. I touch you? my head eight times. You were taking up a lot of room. You are. Um, we are, are. What's really funny about Rose and I is I don't have OCD, but I um definitely have. Uh, I don't know what you call it. The beginnings. Of OCD, I'd I don't say know, you mild, have like tendon. I don't want to put tendons. my stuff on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but, do, but I have tendencies, and that no, no, no. That's not because I live with Rose and I picked it up. It's because when we, I've always had it. When we started dating, I remember one of the things we really grew close over was I remember um you drove me a lot of places when we're in the car like we talk about all our like OCD sort of things and I used to touch things as well I used to touch things twice I used to have to touch everything twice um I have to count my pies I do certain counting things and prayers and stuff and yeah. I have so many. I, you, I don't you, want to talk about it. Obviously, Rose's, obviously Rose's has full-blown OCD. It comes and it's goes. Manageable, though. On, it's manageable. It comes and goes depending on stress, but she always has it. And if I've got a focus like my work or Radio 1, which is a lot of work, mm -hmm. um, or, or like a project or a proposal or a pitch, like I'm fine as long as I, yeah. I'll stay on top of my but work. if you have nothing to do, it creeps. It creeps. And also if you're stressed, though, sometimes yeah. I know you like it when you've got lots of work, but then sometimes you've got lots and lots of work, then you stress and then it gets worse. And you, yeah. Yeah. But I do think like tick my fingers as well. And so I really think that helps you. because and I would say I have a I would say I've definitely suffered from anxiety before. And yeah. so I think that really grew us closer together because I think I deal with your OCD really well and you deal with my thing, problems. The really biggest well. thing you've gone through is the day that you woke up with no hair. Yeah, no. That was crazy. fucking awful. And it was hard for me because I was like, yeah. Oh, that's awkward. You've got no hair. You're as bald as a baby, like yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Uh, not the whole of her head, but like patching about this. It was bit. on top uh, like, I basically it was like a monk. I was on insane. top of my head. I had no But hair. you've been so good, you haven't had alopecia in like two years. Um I've had basically a hair, but it's been like oh, really yeah, you've little. Had a patch, uh, uh, under here. If you look in my latest video actually you can see a really short bit of hair and that's it growing back like in my real talk it's like sticking up because it when it's going back it like won't go won't go down yeah okay my there you go there. i have ocd and my friends don't understand they will if they're educated about yeah. it perhaps maybe you yeah. should just tell them how it you works. can tell them about it um it's quite you, interesting i think do you I think like i proposed to you because you always wanted that i think probably shannon would wouldn't she what to propose yeah i don't know I'm talking about Shannon proposing to me. What are you talking about? You're annoying me. <laughs> um, yeah, worst childhood memory. Okay. Um, when I cracked my head open and my mum was like, oh, I'm going to take you to the hospital because I can see a skull. And then I had stitches and it's fucking painful. Because oh. they put like anaesthetic in my head, local anaesthetic or whatever. Is it local when you're awake? Yeah. And... Uh, but they didn't, they were like, oh, we'll put this in your head so it won't hurt. But it still fucking hurt. And the injections hurt. It's a bad time. I can't think of my worst childhood Amen. memory. Amen. Proposed. My worst childhood memory. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about that one. I've had a few pretty bad ones. One time um, my brothers tied me to a tree and left me there all day. And it was only until the evening when it's dinner. My mum was like, where's Rosie? And then she made them find me. And I was tied to a tree. I've been tied to a tree all day. I was lucky I didn't wipe myself. 
Yeah, nowadays you would have. Oh, I've got one more, one more. Oh, one you've more. had a terrible childhood. No, wait, this is a really good one. <laughs> okay. One day for my birthday, my mum got me this amazing Barbie handbag, right? But when you opened it, it was Barbie's home. Bright pink, amazing, my favourite toy. My brother found a dog shit and put it in my purse, in the Barbie handbag thing. So I went in, out in the garden, opened it up, and there's a fucking dog shit in it. But my mum made him clean it with his own toothbrush. That's disgusting. Hi, Laura, I see you. I see you subscribed. I'm, I'm shouting Hi, Laura you S88. out. Hi, um, That's a horrible thing to do. Prince Steph, I wish I memory is. I've had sore appendicitis. How do I go up with your thing? What if my... But I had appendicitis, then my family going to Spain without me because I couldn't go to a plane in case my stitches burst. It sucks not being able to fly when you have things done. Thanks, a cool kid army. I see you subscribe too. That's cool. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So Sorry you... that I'm winking a lot. My my uh, contact lens is really annoying. I just realised that I'm really like winking. So you had Barbie. I had Puppy in my pocket hotel. It was awesome. <sighs> Oh my god, the puppies are awesome. But then my real life dog Tess, um, she ate some of the puppies, so I had to have so many puppy funerals. And I was like, damn it, Tess, we can't lose anymore. So when Rocky the Retriever went, that's the hardest blow. <laughs> I know, it's a really sad story. <laughs> um, when I was in, uh, in childhood, we had pet chickens, and my next door neighbour built a pool, and my chickens drowned in his pool really nasty it was really sad right should we get to 